every single woman needs to know what I'm about to say. This is essential information that honestly should be given to us in the fifth grade during sex ed class. Now, I don't know why it's not, but we're hoping to change that. So tell your daughters, everyone needs to know this. We're gonna talk about pelvic organ prolapse and not just prolapse, but let's talk about human anatomy, just what we are born with here. So I'm gonna use some visuals. This is gonna be our vagina. Most females are born with a vaginal canal. Going up to the vaginal canal is a cervix right at the top. On top of the, this would be the cervix, my, my hands right here. On top of the cervix is called a uterus. That's the organ at the top. That's where we grow our babies, okay? And so underneath the uterus, on the front side of the body, so here is front side of the body. So now my vagina is here, okay? That's the vag vaginal canal. So on the front of the vag vagina, here is the bladder. The bladder, so here's vagina again. The bladder is here, and then comes the urethra where we pee out of. So the urethra is another hole within the pelvic floor. And then on the back side, so vaginal canal, on the back side of the vaginal canal is your colon where the poop comes out of. Okay, so it's really important to know you have colon on the back side, you have your bladder on the front side, and we need to keep these organs as females inside of our bodies for the rest of our lives. The reason people will get incontinence where they like pee their pants and have to wear depends or pads or different kinds of bladder supports in order to keep their pants dry or they just simply can't keep their pants dry and or they'll like try all the medications in the book is because their bladders can fall into the vaginal canal which is called a prolapse. And that is called, um, specifically when it's the bladder, it's called a cystocele. And essentially, we want to prevent that from happening. We want to keep our bladders in the right places and we want to keep our colons in the right places. And if the colon comes into the vaginal canal, so here's vaginal canal in the, in the back wall, it's not the actual colon itself, it's just the back wall of the vagina where the colon lives, falls into the vaginal canal. If that's the case, then that means the colon is coming in and it's the rectum really that is coming down and in to the vaginal canal. And so either the front wall comes in or the back wall comes in or the top wall can come down, which is the uterus or the cervix. The cervix starts to prolapse. Now, these tissues can all get saggy and kind of mushed together, but it's our responsibility to help keep them in the right places. So how do we do that? Well, let's get started. Just so you can see it here, clearly we have vagina, we have anus, and we have urethra up there. So the three holes that are all embedded in this fancy thing called the pelvic floor. And we can use our pelvic floor to assist us to keep our organs in the right places. But most of the time, that's not enough. So you can do as many kegels as you want and you can still end up with a pelvic organ prolapse. So it's not necessarily about keeping the muscle in shape, but what it is about is about learning how to manage your core pressure. So when we're kids, a lot of times, we just we move naturally right we don't have to think about things but as we turn into adults and maybe you start weight training or you start doing different exercises you might have been taught to do breath holding where it's often taught like if you're going to go do a squat so you would inhale the air squat down and then stand up and that's a lot of downward pressure on those pelvic organs so one thing you can do is just reverse the breath pattern and exhale as you squat or do any exertion. So if you're going to pick up something heavy off the ground, you can shh, exhale, and that's going to help pull the organs up and in and take some downward pressure off the organs. You can call it blow as you go or just exhaling with exertion. Implementing that kind of strategy for any lifting and exercise you do can save your pelvic organs and help keep the vagina the way it's supposed to be without having the bladder coming in and without having the colon coming in and without having the cervix dropping down. So you can use that strategy and you absolutely should use that strategy, especially with someone with female anatomy 
anatomy in order to keep the structures where they are because we want to help prevent pelvic organ prolapse. And the reality is a lot of people, a lot of women end up having to push babies out and a lot of times we're pushing for hours and hours and when we're pushing, we're also pushing our organs down and out and we want to help them heal and go back to their right places. Well, the sh more that we can make our pushing time shorter, the better that it can be for our pelvic organs and not having to push them out for so long. The other strategy that is really important to implement is when you have a bowel movement. So when you have a bowel movement, you often will go sit on the toilet and push the poop out. We want to prevent pushing anything down and out because if we can prevent the pushing down and out, we're gonna help keep our organs in the right places. And so if we have to push our poop out a lot or we're pushing farts out, then that is gonna put downward pressure on the pelvic organs and prevent them from a really staying in their spots. Everyone's going to have a different propensity to their likelihood to prolapse. The reason being like if you have more flexible tissue and really elastic tissue that stretches easily but doesn't necessarily recoil as easily, then you're going to maybe be more susceptible to a pelvic organ prolapse. Now, not all the time, but that's why it becomes really important to just support your body with these healthy techniques in order to prevent that pelvic organ descent. So how to have a bowel movement without pushing the poop out looks like this. What you'll do is you'll get in a seated position. If it's comfortable for your body to lean forward or to use a squatty potty, please do so. If it's not comfortable for your body, don't do it. Because if it's not comfortable for your body, then your pelvic floor can't be fully relaxed. And in order to have a really good poop, you need your pelvic floor super relaxed. So because we're not pushing through concrete here and if we're stressed or we're not comfortable, it'll be like pushing through concrete. So let's not do that. When we're in this nice and flexed position here, what we can do is take a nice belly breath. So we'll take a breath into our lower abdominals and then exhale. You'll do three of those. So two more times, inhale. And at the top of the third inhale, you're Bear down, like you're trying to fart, but you don't want to see anyone fart. So you're not like full on pushing. It's just a really gentle opening of the pelvic floor. And that is how you're going to start to poop in order to help prevent the worsening of pelvic organ prolapse and also just prevent pelvic organ prolapse. So you're going to start to breathe your poop out instead of push your poop out. Is it going to take a little longer on the toilet? It may. Yeah. And you want to work on a good stool consistency so you don't have to poop. You don't have to push the poop out and instead you can just focus on breathing the poop out. So I would love for you to try that at home. The next time you go to the bathroom, instead of like sitting on the toilet, pooping and going, make yourself sit down fully, relax, take the three breaths and see if the poop comes out without you straining. This can be life-changing for the pelvic organs. So it really just takes these two strategies we talked about, blowing before you go or using your exhale with exertion and breathing the poop out to help keep your organs in the right spot and really prevent this pelvic organ prolapse from happening and or from getting worse. So I want you to like and subscribe to this video. We have other videos on file that you can watch all about the anatomy of the vagina and where these organs tend to creep in and down. The more that we can relax our pelvic floor, the more that these organs can actually live and stay in their homes. The tighter our pelvic floor gets, the more pressure is on these organs from the top and the bottom. And oftentimes the more that the, the pelvic organs are squeezed out of the body. And so we wanna prevent that from happening and we'll do so by using this nice breath pattern to help open pelvic floor, help breathe the poop out, and then use the breath to blow with exertion as you do movement in your daily life. I hope you found this helpful. I'm Dr. Allison Felt. Again, like and subscribe, follow us, get all this content because every single woman deserves to have this information in order to help prevent common, common issues like pelvic organ prolapse. There's a reason most of our grandmas are in nursing homes and peeing their pants. And it's because they have pelvic organ prolapses that were never healed and they were never taught proper 
breathing positions and proper, proper bowel mechanics of how to do these things in order to keep their organs inside their bodies. There's nothing worse than feeling like something's falling out. And so I would love for you to get all the information you can to help support your body in this healing process.